Hey y'all, this is gonna be the first video of two on presidential administrations. In this first video, I'm gonna take you guys from our 25th president, McKinley, all the way through FDR. If you're taking here, uh, what is this, U.S. history, sorry. If you're taking U.S. history at Harrison Central High School, McKinley through FDR would have taken you to about the first nine weeks. I'm gonna upload another lecture that's gonna be on Truman through Bush, the second nine weeks. So stay tuned. How y'all doing? Other than musty. Because I know y'all ain't took a bath since we got out for break. Anyway, I'm back with another review to help you guys with your state test, okay? Now, I know I said the second video was going to be on Supreme Court cases, but I want to do the presidents first. And the reason why is because I know it's going to be a little lengthy and Supreme Court cases will be quick, okay? So, go get your packet, okay? The one that you probably have hot Cheetos crumbs on. Probably ain't looked at since the last lecture, if you looked at it then. But go get your packet. Don't forget on page four, is it page four? Yep. Page four, I already have a cheat sheet for you with the presidents, okay? But I want you guys to flip to page eight so you can take notes on these presidents, okay? Now, you guys know, if you're a student in my class, that presidents are my most favorite thing to cover, why? Because I am messy. No, but it's so interesting to see how sometimes their personal beliefs really did affect their administrations, okay? So, you know, in our class, we start at the 25th president of the United States. That is President Garfield. A lot. That was a test. Some of y'all stupid. Like, I don't see Garfield. That's because the 25th is McKinley, okay? This lecture is going to take you from President McKinley all the way through, who am I going to go to? Clinton, okay? So we're going to cover tons of administrations. Now, in some, when I'm talking about some of these presidents, you'll hear me mention things like wars or maybe like an era like the 1930s or the civil rights movement. I'm not going to go into detail in this video about those eras because that video is coming, okay? So let's get started with our presidents. Let's start with President McKinley. If you see me looking down, it's because I jotted some stuff, okay? So that's what I'm looking down at. Um, President McKinley, our 25th president, okay? Um, president McKinley is the president that I like to call our tropical president, okay? I can, I'm almost like 100% sure if you see a question on the state test and it's about McKinley, it is about one thing and that is most likely imperialism, okay? We call President McKinley our imperialistic president because under his administration, we got so many places, okay, because of the Spanish-American War. Puerto Rico, Guam, the Philippines, Cuba becomes a protectorate. We, not because of the Spanish-American War, we get Hawaii, though, okay? He's our tropical president. We acquired all of these places under him, okay? That's pretty much the only thing, if you see McKinley on the state test, that um that it could be about. It would be imperialism. However, something else of importance happens to McKinley. Unfortunately, McKinley is three of four. And what I mean by that, he is our third of our four presidents that have been assassinated. Number one being Abraham Lincoln. Number two being President Garfield. Three, McKinley. And you know, unfortunately, four is going to be JFK, okay? Well, when McKinley is assassinated, his vice president takes over. Now, I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to try to keep it, you know, down. The next president is my most favorite president, and I am biased. Uh, the next president, I'm just crossing off that I told you everything about McKinley. Um, our next president is President Theodore Roosevelt. Don't ever call him Teddy. He hated to be called Teddy. You know that little story about the teddy bear? He hated Teddy, okay? Um, but anyway, Theodore Roosevelt, we say he's our youngest president. Notice I didn't say youngest elected president because that honor is going to go to somebody else. Um, to give you a little background on Theodore Roosevelt, I said I wasn't going to ramble, but I am. Okay, to give you a little background on Theodore Roosevelt, he was born extremely sickly, okay? Sickly kid. He said he can remember um, being a small boy and his daddy would put him in the carriage and like race up and down the roads because his dad thought that fresh air was the best thing for his lungs so that really shaped his life because it made him fall in love with nature he was also very athletic and when I say athletics football baseball tennis Theodore Roosevelt also believed in ballet because he said if you wanted to be a good baseball player uh, ballet would help with your hand and eye coordination Miss Richards is not 
an athlete. So I don't know if that's true. Okay, go ask Coach Wings, Coach Albright, one of them, because I don't know. I was in the band. I was a geek. I used to say if I ever had a daughter, her name was going to be Claire Annette. Yeah, band geek. So I don't know, but Theodore Roosevelt said that it helped with hand-eye coordination, okay? Not only was he athletic, he was also extremely smart. Theodore Roosevelt went to Harvard. Very, very smart man. Um, Make sure I just cross everything off that I want you to know. Um, Some other things that you should know about Theodore Roosevelt is he married a woman that became the love of his life, okay? You might be saying this has nothing to do with state tests. This is going to be important, okay? Um, He marries her. Picture this. On Valentine's Day, she goes into labor. Now, Miss Richards is always alone on Valentine's Day. But what happens to Theodore Roosevelt is going to be like, I can't even complain, okay? His wife, the love of his life, goes into labor. Unfortunately... She dies. She had other diseases that caused it too. Uh, I think the labor started the day before. Anyway, his wife dies on Valentine's Day. Okay. If you think that's bad, it doesn't end there. So imagine Valentine's Day, love of your life dies. It doesn't stop there. A few hours later, same day, same year, his mother dies. Okay. Theodore Roosevelt was quoted as saying he was so depressed. He was too depressed to kill himself. Okay, extremely depressed, but that led to something that's going to change his life. He said that if he could get over that, there would never be any obstacles that would stand in his way. And he took that literally every morning when he was president, Theodore Roosevelt would go for a run and every day he would take a different path. Okay, y'all, but he literally didn't let things stand in his way. So if he ran and he came to a tree, he didn't run around the tree. He climbed the tree and went down the other side. I promise I'm not making it up. If he was running, he came to a little pond. He wouldn't run around and he'd jump in it and swim it. So you would have all these figureheads from other places coming to, uh, you know, visit him. And they see him diving in the lake and they're like, this man is crazy. That's going to be important. Okay. Remember that no obstacles will stand in his way. Okay. So as he was president, there are many things that you could see about him because not only was you, some people say imperialistic because he was a Spanish American hero. He was also a progressive president. I'll go into detail with that when we cover the progressive movement. Uh, progressives are people that try to fix things in society. One thing that we give Theodore Roosevelt credit for is the Meat Inspection Act of 1906. You remember up to Sinclair writes that book, The Jungle, and we find out that rat poop, rat, rotten meat, all this stuff we're ingesting. Theodore Roosevelt passes the Meat Inspection Act of 1906 because he wanted to clean up that meat industry, okay? Something else that you should know about Theodore Roosevelt that makes him a progressive president, he was also something that we, somebody that we call a trust buster. At this time, you should remember your lectures from class, Rockefeller, Carnegie, um, who else? The Vanderbilt. We cover all these industrialists. These people were making huge money because we're living in a time of laissez-faire, okay? There was no government intervention, no government regulation. So these people got so rich. All the money was concentrated at the top. Well, a lot of these companies formed monopolies or like a trust, okay? Theodore Roosevelt is going to come in swinging, okay? And he's going to break up some of those trusts. So he was a trust buster, okay? Um, another reason why you might see Theodore Roosevelt, he is our president that's responsible for the construction of the Panama Canal. And you know that acts as a shortcut. There's so much that you could see for Theodore Roosevelt, okay? Um, oh, I, also, I almost forgot. Something else that you should know about Theodore Roosevelt, he was also, like I told you earlier, huge conservationist. He's one of our first presidents to be truly concerned with conserving some of the most beautiful places that we have in the United States. Because we were rapidly industrializing, he tried to keep some of those places safe. He's the reason why we got Mount Rushmore out there. You see his face etched in it. They should put my face out there. No? Okay. Okay. Um, Something else that you should know about him, he was also a huge arbitrator. That's a term that I know that you've learned in your classes if you're taking U.S. history. An arbitrator is a third person that is unbiased that settles a dispute. To show you how much of an arbitrator that he was, he actually won the Nobel Peace Prize because Russia and Japan, they're going to go to war. They're going to be fighting. Theodore Roosevelt actually steps in as an arbitrator, settles that dispute, ends that war. He wins the Nobel Peace Prize for it, okay? Theodore Roosevelt was a loved president by Nabal. Actually, he was almost assassinated, 
okay you might be wondering why was she telling this story about no obstacles this is why okay one day theodore roosevelt he was giving a speech okay as he was giving a speech a man steps out of the crowd pow shoots theodore roosevelt he doesn't die people begin to panic they want to rush him to the hospital theodore roosevelt said no he said, I started my speech. I will finish my speech. Y'all, the man stood up there with a gunshot wound giving his speech, okay? Everybody was sitting there quiet like, and he continued to give his speech. And when he was finished, he was like, okay, y'all can take me to the hospital. Before he left, a man in the crowd shouted out, look at Roosevelt. He's as strong as a bull moose. That's going to be important, okay? Roosevelt actually could have run for a third term because the 22nd Amendment wasn't in place yet. He could have run for a third term, but he decided not to. Uh, actually, what he went to do, he went to Africa on a hunting safari. Although he liked nature, he also liked shooting at it. Yeah, he goes on a hunting safari away in Africa. Um, but he said, don't worry, I got a friend that you should vote for. This is why you should be iffy about letting somebody use you as a reference. His friend that he said, oh, you should vote for was also a fellow Republican. His name was William Howard Taft. Okay. The sad thing is Taft gets a rap of being like a bad president. And it's not that I think Taft was a bad president. It's just he could never compare to Roosevelt. It's kind of like, have you ever been given a class presentation and you're ready to go up there, but then the dummy that goes before you, they go up there and they have handouts and they're dressed up and they got a PowerPoint presentation. So like yours, while it wasn't bad, people were going to compare it to that. Okay. Roosevelt was the person with all the handouts. Taft, it wasn't that he was a bad president. It's just people constantly compared him, okay? The only thing, unfortunately, for Taft, it kind of bothers me because I'm fluffy. The only thing that people really remember about President Taft is he got stuck in the bathtub at the White House, okay? He literally did. We had to go resize the bathtubs. They ended up making the tubs big enough to fit four average-sized people, so... Big up the Taft for putting fluffy people on the map. But that's all people remember. He did do some great things, though. As a matter of fact, you remember I told you Theodore Roosevelt was a trust buster? Actually, Taft brought more anti-trust cases, anti-against, so against trust. Taft brought more anti-trust cases than Roosevelt. But did anybody really remember that? Nope, all they remember, he got stuck in the bathtub. And he not Roosevelt, Okay. So the next time the election comes around, we're now in the election of 1912. A lot of people thought that Taft was going to back away. They even reached out to Roosevelt. Hey, come run again. Okay. But things are going to play out so differently. In the election of 1912, you're going to have three heavy hitters. Okay. That are going to run. Taft, believe it or not, he's going to say, nope, I'm running. Okay. Taft runs as the Republican. Roosevelt decides, yeah, let me come on back. I'm going to run again. But he couldn't be a Republican, so he made a, he had a new party. His political party was called the Progressive Party, but it has a really neat nickname. The nickname of the Progressive Party is the Bull Moose Party. Why? You remember he got shot? Somebody said he's strong as a bull moose. There's the nickname. So we have Taft the Republican. We have Roosevelt, the Bull Moose or the Progressive then there's a third person. I call him the dark horse, okay? The third person that's going to run is a man named Woodrow Wilson, okay? He's going to be a Democrat, and he's going to run in the election. Actually, there was another person. His name was Eugene V. Debs, was in jail, socialist, all this stuff, okay? He's actually, Eugene V. Debs is going to take tons of other votes too, okay? But you had Woodrow Wilson, the Democrat, okay? So if we look at this election, we have four people that are running that's not a good thing okay that's gonna split the republican vote because some of the votes that roosevelt could have gotten they went to taft some of the votes that taft could have gotten went to roosevelt you had some people that voted for debs what that led to was the dark horse winning okay um woodrow wilson wins the election of 1912 with only 40 i had to think with only 42 percent of the popular vote people didn't expect him to win but 
Woodrow Wilson pulls it off. Now, you might be saying, what happened to Taft? Taft's career didn't end there. He actually went on to do something that he wanted to do anyway. Taft went on to become a justice on the Supreme Court, okay? So, all was not lost, okay? So, now we have moved into Woodrow Wilson, okay? Woodrow Wilson is our president that I can bet you that if you see, um, make sure I told you everything about Taft. If you see Woodrow Wilson, I am pretty sure I can tell you what that, uh, what that question is about. It's about the Great War, also known as World War I. Woodrow Wilson, World War, World War I, the Great War. He's going to carry us through that war. Now, the interesting thing about Woodrow Wilson is you heard how he won the election of uh, 1912. When he runs in the election of 1916, his campaign slogan was, he kept us out of war. Without doing a world history, uh, world uh, war one lesson, the reason why his slogan in 1916 was he kept us out of war is because y'all, starting in 1914, war had just exploded all across Europe. But we didn't care because we were practicing a term called isolationism. We'll cover that when we cover the wars, okay? So when he ran in 1916, his slogan was he kept us out of war, okay? And people loved it. Eh. That was his slogan in 1916. Guess what happened in 1917? We enter the war, okay? Then it's saying the world must be made safe for democracy. If you're taking U.S. history, you've probably heard that speech, okay? That's what it switches to. Woodrow Wilson, the world must be made safe for democracy. Now, not only should you remember Woodrow Wilson because he's our president that carries us through the Great War, what's even more important, in my opinion, is what he attempted to do after the Great War, okay? Woodrow Wilson is going to come up with a peace plan known as the 14 Points, okay? It was a plan for at Vers Versailles, how, how the war is going to end, what we should do to make sure that the Great War, as it had been called, would be the war to end all wars like people thought it would be. Unfortunately, you know that we no longer, you guys probably don't even know that as the Great War. You know it as World War One because World War II is com coming. Had we listened to Wilson, a lot of this uh, World War II probably could have been avoided a little bit, okay? Woodrow Wilson, his peace plan was known as the 14 points and everything broke down. Like it was territorial changes. One dealt with freedom of the seas. It had all of this stuff, but probably the most important of all of the 14 points was the 14th point. It created something known as the League of Nations. The League of Nations was an international peacekeeping organization. What it was supposed to do is it was supposed to ensure that another great atrocity like the Great War wouldn't occur again. Now, the question is, was the League of Nations formed? Yes. The other question you should ask yourself, did we join it? No. Okay. Unfortunately for Woodrow Wilson, Democrat, he faced a hard time by those Republican senators. They were so against him. And unfortunately, the League of Nations, while it is formed, the U.S. doesn't even join it. So imagine that. Our president comes up with the idea, we don't join it. Okay. Um, Woodrow Wilson really wanted us to join the League, too. So much so that he kind of stresses himself out. He's going to have a stroke. So imagine where the country is, okay? We just got out of war. Uh, a lot of people have died. There was also an influenza epidemic that you're learning around. The flu was going around killing millions worldwide. So we were in a tough spot. So the American public thought, let's elect a fun person. For most of my historians, this is their favorite president because he was a drunk and a liar. And it's not my opinion, okay? He was a a crook. Well, we don't know because he's going to die before we could prove that he did it. The next president was actually one of those Republican senators that opposed us joining the League of Nations. His name was Warren G. Harding. If you're a music kid, there's even a rap artist named Warren G. Foreshadow, okay? Warren G. Harding, okay? Um, He believed in isolationism. He did not want us to join the League of Nations because he said it would forever tie us to Europe. As a matter of fact, when he ran, his campaign slogan was a return to normalcy. What he means by that is I want to return the United States to how we were prior to uh World War I, okay? Um, he's going to do anything but, okay? Instead of hiring, hiring people that were qualified for you know, jobs. He's going to hire a bunch of his friends from his home state of Ohio. These friends earned the nickname, the Ohio gang. They played poker. 
they drank. You might be saying, but they're adults. They should be allowed to. The reason why this issue, prohibition has come in. So nobody should be drinking. Interesting fact that we now know a lot of the confiscated alcohol during prohibition made his way to the White House. Okay. Warren G. Harding even said, it's not my enemies that keep me up at night pacing the floors. It is my friends. His friends are going to get involved in a bunch of scandals. Probably the most famous one uh, involving one of the members of the Ohio gang. His name was Albert Fall. It happened in Teapot Dome, Wyoming. Uh, what he did is he allowed a company to go out there and drill for some oil illegally. He goes down for the crime, okay? Uh, the interesting thing that kids always want to ask, because there are tons of scandals. They always say, did Warren Harding know about these scandals? Because they had to have been going on like right under his nose. We don't know. You know why? Warren Harding dies in office. He wasn't assassinated. He just dies. You might be saying, well, how? We don't know. Let me get messy. He also cheated on his wife a lot. Most history books, even the books in our classroom, they say things like a possible heart attack. Notice that word possible. This is why we don't know how Warren G. Harding died. Y'all, there was no autopsy performed on his body. The president, no autopsy. You'll find rumors out there that he died from a drug overdose the kids found. One kid found an article that said that actually his wife poisoned him followed it cheating. That's why Miss Richards is single, okay? Uh, some people say the government killed him off because it was an embarrassment. Either way, we don't know. Okay. Now, his vice president was a complete opposite. Okay. Complete opposite. Hardy, uh, Harding was party, Hardy, Harding. His uh, vice president was Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge, another one of my favorite presidents. He was really, really quiet. That's why they called him Silent Cal. Uh, story goes that actually one day while he was president, somebody bit a news reporter. If you can get President Coolidge to say more than three words, we will give you money. So the news reporter goes to dinner. She's sitting there with President Coolidge and President Coolidge is Silent Cal. He's just eating, not talking to anybody. Finally, she says to him, Somebody bet me if I could get you to say more than three words, they give me some money. He looks at her, he eats. He looks at her, he eats. And finally, he does speak. And this is what he says. You lose. Petty. Petty. Okay. Silent Cow, the first thing he did when he took office, fired the Ohio gang. Bam. He's a bomb president now in history. Okay. The only thing people really uh know about Calvin Coolidge is this. And if you see him on the state test, this is what you should know, okay? He was a friend of big business. So if you think about it, we covered Taft and Roosevelt breaking up those trusts and trying to regulate big business. Coolidge, not so much. He said we need to leave big businesses unregulated because as they grow, the American economy will grow as well, okay? If we don't regulate them as much, they'll be able to open more businesses. People will be able to get jobs. If people get jobs, they will buy. A lot of people say that actually Calvin Coolidge, this supply side economics, trickle down economics, Reaganomics, it all has a basis in uh, Calvin, this Calvin Coolidge. Actually, Calvin Coolidge, a lot of people say he's responsible for making the 1920s roar. Okay. So if you see Calvin Coolidge, what you should think, laissez faire. Okay. He made, like, he made the economy roar. He was a friend of big business, pro laissez faire. Okay. He did not run for another term. Instead, the man that is going to win the election is a man named Herbert Hoover. Now, you'll learn when we get to World War I, Herbert Hoover wasn't a stranger to the American public. Herbert Hoover, actually, during the uh, Great War, Herbert Hoover was over the Food and Fuel Administration. He helped us conserve. So you might have heard about, like, Hooverizing. That's people, like, planting gardens, like, saving uh, the amount of oil and all that stuff, okay? So he wasn't new, okay? Uh, Herbert Hoover, uh, to give you a little background on him, he had a rough childhood, but he ends up going to a very prestigious college, him and his wife. They actually opened up mining companies over in Asia, okay? Very successful company. They could even speak Mandarin Chinese to each other. No, they were petty. Like, uh, people say that when they would be in the White House together, they would be talking to each other in English, and if somebody walks in the room, they would just start talking in Mandarin Chinese, Kind of like how they do when Miss Richards goes to get a pedicure. But anyway.
Anywho, okay, so Herbert Hoover, he was successful. He said, if you vote for me, a chicken in every pot, a car in every garage. He actually said that poverty would be eradicated, okay? He said the 1930s would roar just like the 1920s had. Well, no, okay? He ran against a man named Alfred Smith, but Alfred Smith didn't stand a chance, unfortunately, because our country at the time was very anti-Catholic. And unfortunately, we were anti-immigrant, anti-Catholic. That It was just bad. Alfred uh, E. Smith just endured a smear campaign. So Herbert Hoover wins. He becomes the president. He predicts an end of poverty. Well, he's elected in 28. You guys should know what happens in 29. Y'all, the bottom is going to fall out. Literally, the Great Depression hits. Now, this is the problem with Herbert Hoover, okay? Herbert Hoover, when he becomes president, he does not believe in giving out direct relief to the people. He does not, okay? Instead, Herbert Hoover believes in something known as rugged individualism. He said the government should not step in and be giving out direct relief to the people because once the government starts to do that, people will forever be tied to the government. They'll expect the government to come in and bail them out anytime they don't have. So he didn't believe the government should give out direct relief, okay? Now, you might be looking at things today like, oh, I agree with that, but you got to think about people living in the Great Depression. Do you think they agree with it? No. Herbert Hoover not giving out direct relief, it pretty much set in stone that he would not be reelected in 32. Um, that coupled with another incident uh, called the Bonus Army incident, okay? That's when he's going to have a, a group of veterans are going to march to D.C. to demand they get this World uh, War I bonus that they were promised, that they get it a little early uh, because they, they needed it. Herbert Hoover tells them no. They began to camp out in D.C., they began to make Hoovervilles. Those are those shanty towns, like cardboard boxes all around D.C. They would say, Mr. Hoover, you're in the White House, living it up. You have food in your belly, and we are starving, so we want you to see us. Well, Herbert Hoover's going to hire or command some troops to go in and beat up those bonus army marchers, is the nickname they are, and that didn't really go over too well. You notice that I said Hooverville? You had tons. Hoover flags. A Hoover flag is when you turn your pocket inside out because you're poor. You had Hoover blankets. That's a newspaper because that's all you could afford to sleep under. Hoover's approval rating just tanked. Okay? Well, the next person that comes along is a person that is going to give out direct relief. Okay? He's one of our three presidents that we refer to as their initials. That president is President FDR or President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay, he's going to give out direct relief during the Great Depression. That is known as his New Deal program. He's also going to be our pro, uh, president that carries us through World War II. There's tons that can be said for him. Okay, for uh, FDR... Some things that I would definitely, definitely, definitely know about FDR. Great Depression, gave out relief, and World War II, okay? He's going to carry us almost through it. He's going to die right before the war ends, okay? A little background on him. He was born to a very, very, very wealthy family, so he had always had, okay? Um, he actually was related to the other Roosevelt that we've already discussed. His wife was too. If you hadn't picked up on what I'm trying to say, all of these people are related. FDR was even related to his wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, even though it was distant, okay? She's going to be very important in politics because she's going to carry on even after FDR dies in office. Let's be messy. It seems like they will be a power couple, but let me give you this tea. He was cheating on her. Bloop. We know it factually. With a woman named Lucy to the point that Eleanor almost broke up with him or not broke up, divorced him. But his mom begged him, please don't leave my boy. If you do, he could never be president. So she stayed. Eleanor kind of dealt with it to the point that even when FDR died, Lucy came to the funeral. It was right there. Like, hey, okay. <laughs> but that's not the important stuff. What you should know is unfortunately for FDR, one day he was swimming in a pool with his children and all of a sudden his legs give out. It is because he is contracted this disease 
that is plaguing the nation called polio. It left Roosevelt with little to no use of his legs. He actually said that that's the best thing that could have happened to him because he was born to such a wealthy family. It was the first time that he learned or he knew what it was like to not have, okay? So he appreciated later on in life him not having the use of his legs, okay? When he becomes president, he says that he's going to give that direct relief that Hoover didn't. He did this with a series of programs called the New Deal programs, okay? Have you ever heard that saying, we have nothing to fear but fear itself? That's FDR. What he means by that is we're going to keep trying things. If it doesn't work, we'll fix it. The saying goes, it took a crippled nation, a crippled man to te teach the nation how to walk again. Okay. He comes up with this soup to fix the country called the New Deal. Okay. Literally, we call him the alphabet soup president. AAA, CCC, TVA, SEC, FDIC. All of these programs that he passed to fix things, okay? One of the first things that he wanted to fix were the banks, okay? So he did fireside chats where he told people to go trust the banks and put their money back in the banks. He also did bank holidays where he would close banks to keep those banks safe. And he also created a New Deal program, FDIC. It ensures your money in the banks. He also created the SEC. What the SEC does is it regulates the stock market and ensure we don't have another great crash like we did. He went and did other things too, like the CCC, put men to work, young men between the ages of 18 and 25, jobs in the forestry department, okay? He also created, give me another one, the TVA, okay? The TVA, what that one did is it uh, gave electricity to rural areas, okay? You might be thinking, how could that help us? Those dams needed to be constructed, right? It put people to work, okay? He also had some that aren't going to go over well, like the AAA. It paid farmers not to grow crops or raise certain livestock, and that one's going go down you'll learn why in the great depression okay he also did the nra which set prices and that one's gonna go down too but what i'm telling you is roosevelt was not afraid to try to give out relief now at the time people loved roosevelt for that however hoover remember he said he didn't believe in relief because he would expect people to bail out now we have become depending on the government to bail us out right okay it showed us that the um the government was there to act for the people, okay? Um, Roosevelt, like I said, is elected in 1932, okay? He is our longest serving president, okay? Longest serving president. He's our president that after him, 22nd Amendment goes into effect. The only president it didn't touch was Truman, the next one. But after that, two terms, because he's our longest serving president, elected to four terms. He doesn't finish that fourth term, okay? The 20th Amendment was also passed because of Hoover and FDR, Remember Hoover turned into a president that wouldn't give out that direct relief? We called it a lame duck. He was lame, okay? He wasn't like Miss Richards. He was lame. Hoover was, okay? Because of that, we said the American public should never have to go through uh, an entire winter with a lame president that's not acting for the people. So we changed the date of inaugura inauguration from March to January, okay? So the 20th, 22nd Amendment, FDR and Hoover, okay? The only other thing that you should know about um, FDR is not only we have nothing to fear but fear yourself, but you should remember this quote too. December 7, 1941, a date that will live in infamy. That's the very famous line that FDR gives when he gives that speech telling us that we have just been attacked by the Japanese at our Navy base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, or at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, okay? The event that brings us into World War II, okay? He's going to be our president that carries us throughout World War II almost to the end, but he's going to die, unfortunately, in May of 45. The war ends in August, so he doesn't see the end, okay? Uh, now, some negatives about FDR that you might see, the court packing plan. That's when he tried to add more justices to the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court was striking down some of his New Deal legislation like the NRA and AAA. Some people saw that him trying to get over on checks and balances. Another thing that people really don't like about FDR is the Korematsu case, okay? Uh, and Korematsu, you'll learn that later, but we take the Japanese Americans and we put them in internment camps. They were kind of like prison camps. Why? Because of Pearl Harbor. Some people didn't like that that was done under FDR's administration, and we'll go into more detail with that, okay? Um, FDR, like I said, unfortunately, he does not get to see the end of the war because he's going to die in May of 45. Instead, who's going to take over is his vice president, a man named Harry S. Truman.
okay? Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop here because if you take U.S. history at Harrison Central, this is the nine weeks. What I just lectured on are the presidents from the first nine weeks. The next lecture that you're going to see is the presidents for the second half of the nine weeks. That's going to be Truman all the way through Bush, okay? What I want you to do before you watch the next lecture, get your notes and see how much of this that you know about the presidents? Is there some things that you forgot and you need to come back through and listen to this lecture? Okay. All right, y'all. I hope that this helps. Play it as often as you need to. Like I said, stay tuned for the second half of the presidential administrations. I miss you guys. Bye.